And um, today I would like to show you that Pausha of obviously is an, an island. It's more or less like a common denominator. And you've already seen how you can import data from different sources like XML uh, or .NET objects or anything like that. And there's this built-in magic, the extended type system that makes everything behave like an object, which is great. But there's also primitive data, unstructured data out there. And uh, I'm sure you all have um, eventually the need for parsing a log file or otherwise transforming unstructured data into structured, da structured data. Which is why I would like to show you a couple of strategies that have proven quite useful in, um, in the real world to convert plain text into real PowerShell objects. Once you have objects, you have your set of six important commandlets that in most scenarios do the hard work, like all the object family commandlets, select object for each object, where object, group, sort, like that. It's basically SQL, what's PowerShell using there. <coughs> so how can we really uh, get any unstructured information into this PowerShell common denominator object-oriented world? Well, I want to discuss with you, first of all, how you create your own parsers, which is obviously a little bit hard, but you can do it, and you'll get a very specific parser for that. I'll show you how you can abuse existing parsers, because PowerShell obviously contains parsers already, and it's just a matter of, of sort of tricking them into parsing your data. And then um, we'll look into automatic parsing, which is part of PowerShell 5, and uh, Jeffrey mentioned that in his talk this morning. That's the so-called example-driven parsing, where I don't bother writing any parsing. Instead, I'm supplying examples and then leave the hard work to uh, a new commandlet. So first of all, wha what is a parser? Re um, regardless of whether I create it myself or whether I use an existing parser, a parser has the job to translate unstructured information into meaningful pieces or tokens of information. And the key word is meaningful. It's not providing any meaning, which would be interpretation. It's simply providing pieces or chunks of information. And then it's your job to interpret an IP address or a MAC address or whatever you got out of a text file. And this is a list of all the parsers that you can find in PowerShell already. And um, well, obviously, you have used them before. So if you have XML data or CSV data, then you can use the appropriate command list to read it in and turn, and turn it into objects. But there's more. For example, here there's also a parser that uh, interprets PowerShell code, which is going to be uh, the topic of a session on Wednesday. That is a parser also. PowerShell code, after all, is simply plain text. And then there's, again, this new convert from string that I'm going to discuss a little bit later. So when we want to create a new parser, what's the job of a parser? A parser needs to, first of all, accept raw data then apply some structure to it, and then finally, that's important, return rich PowerShell objects so that these objects can play in the PowerShell world, that I can sort them or send them to Excel or do whatever I want to. So the mission now, the first mission would be to uh, create a parser for a log file. And to do that, the uh, tools needed depend on your level. If you're a beginner, you can get away with plain text splitting operators. You'll see that in a minute. They're extremely powerful, and they can be sufficient. Or if you want to go one step further, of course, you can dive into regular expressions, which would raise the question, who of you is using regular expressions? All right. <laughs> That's good. So let's take a look at the first demo. And this is also a demo at the same time, I hope, for the version 2 of my ISE steroids. Uh, this is the first public meeting where, where they can show off. And uh, let's see if, <laughs> if that works. OK. Now what I want to parse is this. I want to take the Windows Update log file. And as you can see, as a human being, there is a structure. There's information that uh, has a delimiter. And that's very typical for tabular-oriented data. In this case, it's, it's a tab. <coughs> Um, so how can we write a parser for that? Here's a script. Um, first of all, I am reading in that information. That's very easy. I have get content. But yes, of course. Um, but then I want, to, I want to do something with it. In this case, I am processing each line. And this is a habit of mine. It's optional. I always store dollar underscore in a meaningful variable. So I Next week, I know what it is. And this is basically the heart of this parser. It's simply split. 
I don't use any regular expression at that point. I'm simply saying, hey, I split that stuff at the tabular uh, delimiter that I identified. Then this, the, the last part was that the parser was supposed to return rich objects. And that's the best way, in my opinion, to do that. I am creating an ordered hash table, which is uh, new, I think, in PowerShell 3. Um, you can use a normal hash table if you want to, but the ordered hash table guarantees that the order of your properties will, will remain um, in this order here. And then once you have a hash table, you can simply turn it into an object. So I'm splitting that stuff, putting the information into my hash table, and as you can see, I'm not putting all of the information into my hash table. I'm simply from the chunks that I get from each line, I take the first element, the second element, and the last element. Because I found that in my log file, in this example, the first was the date, the second was the time, and the last was the product. So when I run this, it takes a couple of seconds, and then I end up with some information. That is my log file, my raw log file, now parsed and put into real PowerShell objects. Each line is an object, and each object has three properties. That's a basic principle that you can apply to many, many different log file types, because the only things you need to adjust are the delimiter. If you have a comma sep uh, separated um, log file, you simply replace that with a comma. And of course, you need to pick the pieces, the chunks of information that are useful to you. Here's a slight variation of the same thing. Um, what you can see here is I get the same content, by, but I do pre-filtering. That is ob obviously very useful. Since this whole thing is text-based, before you let the parser turn it into objects, it'll speed up things considerably if you sort out any lines that don't uh, contain the information you're after. If I wanted to see only the updates that l were lately installed on my machine, I would obviously only look for lines that are successfully installed in them. And this time, this thing is a lot faster. As you can see, I, here I have my updates picked out of my log file. Still, this whole thing took, you can see it down here, 1.69 seconds. And uh, we were talking about performance uh, this morning already. Here you see again a slight variation, but this time I am investing memory in turn, and in turn I get speed. This time I'm avoiding the pipeline, which is a very great construct. It's uh, very stable and it's, con uh, it's saving memory, but if I need things to happen fast, I, and this time I'm reading in the whole file in one step here, and then I can sort of process the whole thing in memory. And when I do this, it's much faster. It's 0 0.3 seconds rather than 1.7 or something. And if it's a large file, you can imagine the speed difference. So that's, in general, a very interesting decision that you can make whether, whether you want to invest memory or not. Oh, that's one, one step further. Now, that was parsing of a plain text file simply by using split. That's all you needed. But you all raised your hands when I asked um, who of you has done things with regular expressions? So maybe you're sorry you raised your hand. So we have to look at regular expressions as well. Regular expressions give you a lot more freedom. I'm not going to dive into regular expressions, but they are sort of like a search warrant. You can create a pattern and then find that pattern wherever you want in your text. And so um, here is a slight variation that shows how that would work. It is basically the same thing. I'm have, I'm having that file here, and this is the pattern that I'm using, but I want to show you how you can derive from a regular expression pattern objects in one almost one step. Um, most of you will recognize this a digit, and this a quantifier, so four digits, then slash two digits, slash two digits, and so on. But if you um, add a label to it, so if you put parents into your pattern and label the pieces that you're after, you have a date, I have a time, and when I go on a little bit further, I have my message, which is right here. Then the uh, match operator will tell you true or false, whether it matches or not. And if it does match, what you get back is a hash table with the matches. And the hash table uses exactly those keys that you decide that you did. Oh, it did something. Thank you. Magic. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Richard. Can you stay here, please? <laughs> So basically, you can take matches from match 
and turn it right into an object. However, match and matches, matches is, is a regular hash table, so it's not an ordered hash table, which um, <coughs> requires you to use select object to sort out the, the expressions you want and the order in which you want them. But other than that, it works fine. If I run this, it'll again parse my file, and you can see date, time, message, that's exactly what I used up here, date, time, message. If I renamed it here, obviously here too, then everything would turn in, uh, the, the name would turn in all my objects. You can do this very same thing with an ordered hash table as well. So I take an empty ordered hash table, take my regular expression matches, and simply take out the information and feed it into my ordered hash table, and then create my object from that ordered hash table. This would give me a couple milliseconds um, benefit because I don't need the select object anymore. But other than that, it's basically the same thing. All right. So that was the hard part, really. I had to create the parser myself, either ch choosing the split operator or come up with some kind of magic regular expression thing. But you can also use existing parsers if you are thinking about it. Um, the most generic existing parser that you have is the one for CSV. Um, and when you think about the essence of CSV, then the essence of CSV is simply it's a tabular data format, so it's one data set per line. It has a unique delimiter, and it has headers. Once your data meets these requirements, and many log files do, you are in the game. Uh, so simply turn your raw data, data into sort of this format, and thanks to the PowerShell team, the commandlets that usually process CSV are versatile enough to support slight variations. Take a look at how much easier it is to use those existing parsers. So I'm switching now to the uh, other solution. And that's it. That is basically doing the same thing. I again have my file here. Now my log file did not have headers, but I can supply headers. And the easiest thing for me to supply headers is simply to provide a list of numbers, because I don't know what those columns mean, so I just take 31 numbers, so I have 31 column headers, and that's all I need. I tell import CSV, hey, I don't have a CSV, I have a tap SV, so I take a tap, and that's it. When I run this, I get the very same result. I get rich objects. I don't have to do very much. You can see the columns are my numbers. So that's really, yeah, it's, a, it's well, that's cool, isn't it? And we yes. should clap for the PowerShell team because they make, made it so versatile to use. I really like that. <laughs> and then once you identified what the columns mean, like I, I do it again, I can easily see column zero is the date, column one is the time, and so on. Then it's just a piece of cake to move on and simply replace those numbers with a meaningful text. I just replace the ones that I identified. The rest, keep, I, I keep numbers. So this time, I, I get back something like that. It's parsed. So it's only mimicking CSV, but then it can use. And then also do this, and also do high performance. Oh, I'm already in the game. Great. All right. So. Um, that is really a very interesting technique that you can use. And um, you, d you can use it multiple ways. For example, in the last previous example, I used import CSV. Import CSV was taking care of everything. It was reading the file and then turning it into CSV. Here's an alternative using get content and then convert from CSV, which <coughs> when you do it like that is a little bit slower because it is reading line by line by line. But it gives you the benefit of pre-processing the data. So you can basically read in the, li uh, the log file and then sort out all the lines that you don't need, that don't contain the keywords you're after, and only convert those that you are interested in. So this one would be, in essence, a little bit faster. It still takes about three seconds. I'm, I think, yeah, here I didn't output it to grid view anymore. You've seen that the data is there. I was simply, I wanted to focus on the number of results that I get. So 54 results. 54 updates were installed. And here is a variation that I would like to show you. You have to focus on the status bar. I'm going back one, one uh, to, the, to the previous example. This one takes 
3.63 seconds. It's not outputting anything, but it's just retrieving the data. Now I'm doing the same thing with this script, and it takes 2.3 seconds. Well, at least 30% faster, only by adding this. This time I was telling get content to read in the string array in one chunk rather than line by line by line. So my pipeline only handed over one object, which was the string array, rather than 13,000 lines of string objects. Provided that your commandlet can accept string arrays, that is a good optimization strategy. Just as an aside to that, so we ended up having to switch over to using the stream reader for performance reasons. If we'd done that, would that have done the same thing in effect? Yeah, it depends a little bit on who's receiving it. If convert from CSV can deal with a string array, then everything is fine. If it needs to get in strings, then you would probably have to uh, not use read count zero. Also yep. in uh, PowerShell version three, we added dash raw. Yeah, that's, wait a minute. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be right with you. <laughs> it's right here, raw. <laughs> So that, that is basically also possible. Raw will read the whole text in one step and then feed it into convert from CSV, which, which of course um, requires um, that commander to accept raw text. Um, I, I tried that when I was passing text logs. In the end, I went back to reading line by line because I like the ability to find the line in the log after I found the issue. Exactly. It depends on how you implement it. If you want to go line by line, then of course you need get content to provide you line by line, which you can do in both ways. Both the plain commandlet and read count zero will give you all individual lines in a different way. Then what I ended up doing was I was trying to find the, there are random events with the software that had issue, and if there were five of them in 20 lines, it was a real issue, and if there was one in 20, it wasn't. So it was using the line count to give me a, a crude right. timeline of what was going on, basically. Right. Yeah, if, if there's nothing wrong in, in using get content without these optimi optimization strategies. You just have to think about, do I need it? Do I want lines or can I process the whole text? And basically, here's again a strategy that you've seen previously. This would be the in-memory approach. Even if I use raw, it still takes about two seconds. If I use the in-memory approach, so I'm reading the whole text first and then processing it with the classic for each, then the whole thing only takes 0 0.3 seconds. So again, this can make a real world difference. This is not a very large file. But you have to be aware of that you're burning lots of memory. That's the downside of it. So it, we have seen <coughs> two ways of parsing text files so far. One was using simple text splitting operators or advanced regular expressions. That's your own parser. Or you are kidnapping one of the parsers that are built into PowerShell. Uh, that makes life much easier. And now let's go one step further. Oops, sorry. The same principle that you've seen here for log files applies to any kind of raw text data. And there's a lot of interesting and useful legacy commands that by nature return text as well. And since PowerShell allows redirection of console-based commands, it's very easy for you to get to that text. It's just a matter of parsing it. So the even better part is that lots of those commandlets, uh, commands <coughs> have a Magic option, FO, format output, so they can already provide you with CSV data. You don't even need to parse. You simply need to remember that CSV or that PowerShell has diplomatic uh, relationships to CSV. Once you have CSV, PowerShell can read it. So all of these commands, and these are not the only ones, have this FO CSV. And that can give you a lot of info uh, interesting information, and you can then, once you have it, optionally also post-process your information. What I mean by that you'll see in a second because you will eventually run into localization issues when you process raw text data and that's not good. We want to, want to fight that. And then of course there's a special challenge. When you remember the tabular format of data always re requires a delimiter. So you can already process comma separated, tab separated and stuff like that. But what about fixed width columns? There is not one separator. There's, it's filled with spaces so that all, all the lines, all the columns align pretty. We have to find a way to get these into the same scheme. Now, first of all, here's an example using system info. System info, who knows system info? 
you will see in a second, you'll witness in a second how PowerShell can turn this into a unique system information tool uh, because when I run it like that, what I get back is the information, okay, but um, it's well not really easy to use. It's simple text. I can't do much with it. However, if I add this magic FO CSV, then the whole thing will be CSV. And then PowerShell can read it. So basically, when I do this here, let's do it a little bit different. Let's see. Hello. I want to add something. I can't. I'm in presentation mode. Sorry. So I'll do it like that. I'm simply running it through convert from CSV. And you'll see that you get back an object with object properties that you can ask. So if I store this information after I have converted it into a variable, then I'm in the game. That's all I need. So now, once I have this, see what I can do. I can say info dot, and here's my information. That's all I need. It's right there. Domain is this, OK? Pick something else. And you see, there's one challenge, though. It took the headers from the original F uh, CSV, and they may be either localized, or they can even contain special characters, like spaces and parents, like this one. PowerShell can deal with it. It'll just quote it, and it'll work. But it's not nice. So the first step would be really to um, convert it from, CS uh, from CSV data to rich objects. But then you need to take one more step. Let's see if you can see what this line will do. Anyone has a suggestion what this, this line would do? But there's a comment over it. <laughs> it is basically CSV data, so it is line-oriented data. So if this is CSV, and I take only the first line, then that's the line with my headers. So that's a CSV header line. And ClipXE is a convenient tool that simply pastes the stuff to the clipboard. So I run this. I get my first line, and now let's uh, go here. If I, for example, define a variable, header equal oh, English, that's why. <laughs> header equals, and then paste that in, here are my headers. As you see, isosteroids is uh, underlying in blue because it's supposed to be uh, all single quoted, so change it, <laughs> and also do it like one array per line, and then here you have all the different headers, and now you can change them. You can make them cultural neutral. You can call them as you like, which is what I prepared here. Like a good TV cook would say, yeah, I prepared something for you, and it's right here. I uh, just went through the original headers and renamed them, and then it's simply a question of skipping the first line, so the original headers are not <coughs> used anymore, and then adding your own headers. So you cutting off the original headers, replacing them with your headers, and the, the result is now it's a cultural neutral approach, no matter where the data comes from, French, German, Italian systems, and you can decide whether you want to have special characters in them or not. And this thing, system info, actually, has a switch called S. Oh, wait. Here we are. Hey, all right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now this was parsing where you provided the parser or you provided data to an existing parser. In PowerShell 5, there's a new feature which is um, called example-driven or example-based parsing. And it, it can deal with any kind of data. It's of obviously a very nice thing to be applied to complex data where it's not the typical tabular design that can be easily parsed the way I showed it to you. And um, it works like this. You train a commandlet. There's a commandlet called convert from string. And you simply train it. If you, need, if you know speech recognition, you also know it takes some time till that thing understands you. You have to talk to it so it, it, it can learn your language. And the same is true for this commandlet, too. So you train it with a couple of data sets showing where the interesting data is, and then leave the entire parsing to that commandlet. It is using uh, something called Flash Extract from Microsoft Research, and I think Lee can tell, tell us later on much more about it. Um, I just want to show you the idea behind it. Um, I really sincerely hope <laughs> it yeah. works now. OK. So this is what I want to parse. This is a vendor list with MAC IDs, or vendor MAC IDs. So the first three digits are 
the vendor IDs of a MAC address, and then there is the vendor uh, who <laughs> is producing that network adapter. It's a, a long, long, long file. You can see it, very long file. And if I wanted to apply my strategies to it, it wouldn't be that easy, because there is no one delimiter that I could use. So before I show you the actual code, I created the, a little uh, wizard <coughs> that helps me, under, uh, helps me illustrate what it does. So I'm loading basically my list. It looks like this. And now I'm providing examples. So I'm saying, hey, I know this thing here, that is going to be a MAC address, so MAC. And this one is going to be uh, the company. From Bernie. And you can see in this, let, let's take one more thing. This is the country. Huh? Country. This is an ISC steroid? Yes. <laughs> and you, you can see what it did. It put a label around these uh, instances, and I'll provide one more, uh, just so that it knows I, I mean it this way. So Mac, <laughs> company, and United States. And now, um, since this is a very large file, the best thing to not get frustrated is to not scan it entirely from the very beginning. So I'm simply putting a breakpoint in here. I'm saying, I want to pass till here, limit data. So now it's limited to that amount of data, and now I'm test driving it. And as you can see, that's what's, what, what's the result. It, it found all the data sets, although I only sampled the first two, although when you look at the data, it was easy, right? Because there's always the same company at the beginning. So let's see what's happening when I extend that reach. So I close this, and I'm extending it. Let's say one more data set, or two. And try it again. It failed. And now the question is why? Since, um, well, I can either think or I can, I can invest time. If I don't want to think, I invest time. So I invest time now. Uh, I'm simply, it, until here, it could, uh, I could parse it. So here was the problem. Let's simply label it so it can learn more. Company and country. And let's try that. Works. So you can always go to the spot where it didn't work anymore and provide another sample. But you could also think about it, why it broke exactly at that position. And if you look at it, you'll see that the problem was, until here, it thought it was numbers. Then I had a 0A. 0A was a letter. So since my sample data only contained numbers, the automatic parser generator thought, well, this doesn't fit in. Once I added that example too, so it could learn that there's also letters in it, I was in the game. And I could go on like that, for example, by uh, just going one, let's go to Cisco here, limit it to Cisco, test drive it. And as you can see, Cisco is recognized, but the country isn't recognized anymore. So now I would again add one more sample so that it could learn that there can also be commas and dots in the company name. Let's do that as a last thing here. <laughs> Mac, company, and country, and get more data. Let's go to here. OK, and it works. And so you could go on uh, step by step, or now we can generate the code. The code behind this would look like this. This is my code that I just created. There is the sample section. That's the samples that I labeled. And then that's the code that I need. And basically, um, what, when you play with it, what I would recommend is really to look at this line here. I'm reading in the, the raw data, which can be very large, but so that you can, can do it chunk by chunk and in smaller steps first to understand what it's doing, simply add a select object first x and then only process the first x elements of that file. <laughs> this is the magic, convert from string. It takes your template, the template up there, and, um, well, you don't have to put that in there, and um, then that's it. It either works or you have to provide more samples. The samples themselves, they, uh, as you can see, use these braces. And um, it's a very simple thing. You have braces around the areas that you find interesting. And you have a label that labels them. So the MAC address has always the MAC. And then you have to also put in a star for the first field of a data set so that it knows where the data set starts. So the MAC has the star. And all the others don't have a star anymore. And uh, another thing to note is 
if your original data happens to contain either braces or backslashes, then you need to process your template a little bit. Because as you can see, the brace has a special meaning. So if there is a brace in, in the raw data itself, you need to escape it with a backslash, which is done by this uh, with wizard automatically. And then the other thing you have to be careful with is the backslash. It's an escape character. So if you have an escape, or if, if you have a backslash in there, you of course need to escape that too. But again, um, there are tools out there, and there are going to be more tools out there, I guess, that will help you play with that. This is not to replace the other strategies. It's simply another option that you have if you have complex data and you have no idea about regular expressions or not the time to dive into it, you can go this route. OK? Yeah, how much can you modify the template? Uh, is, I mean, you have these different tags there, but uh, and how intelligent is it? Or can you fit in regular expressions there as well? Or? You have the option to also use regular expressions in there. For example, if you have empty fields, you can say backslash s, which would then be just a white space. But uh, to be quite honest, uh, like Jeffrey said, um, or I don't know who, is, who said it, if it's not the final product, you don't have documentation that much. So there's not that much documentation. Um, uh, we should talk to Lee uh, what kind slash, of. Try to slash w instead of United States. Um, I think that should work. I, I just tried it with a slash s, a backslash s, and that worked well. Um, so, but, but you're right. This is the example that I took directly from the data because I didn't want to think. I simply labeled, labeled, labeled. Of course, you can think too, and you don't need to take actual data. It is sufficient to have sampling data. So if I know that, for example, my MAC address can also have here a letter, then there's no one keeping me from putting a letter in here and teaching the system this way. So it can be sort of, um, it don't have, this, these, don't, these started data sets don't have to be real data. Is it based on regular expressions in the back? There is something like it. That's Lee. Yeah, Lee, you should, it's not exactly regex, right? So the idea is that um, the research project behind this is based on a technique like regular expressions. It learns programs based on your data. So in regex, you have like words and spaces and numbers. The underlying language has been extended to uh, talk about text manipulation commands. So like moving down a line, moving right a line, and just other things that you would do when you're extracting data aside from just regular expressions. So then based on the training data, it automatically learns the most uh, general program or the most specific program that can hit all your examples, and then it uses that. Is this shared uh, with the Excel flash fill feature? It's, it's, um, it's not shared, it's the same team, and so we've been working with them. <coughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I think this is going to be a very hot topic, and I'm sure we'll, we'll all be talking about this tonight, maybe with Lee. <laughs> um, well, this is another approach. It depends always what, what you wanted to do. And I want to talk about talking to Neanderthals, so to plain text, unstructured data. If you use the, ex uh, um, the experience-based learning that you've just seen, you can parse really complex data. But even if it is complex data, if what you want is very simple, then you can also come up with your own parser. This, for example, would simply read in the Mac vendor list and then use the in-memory approach to simply look for something that uh, matches my regular expression up there. And the regular expression, of course, I would never come up with a regular expression that picks Mac, company, street, and country, because that's spanning multiple lines. But if all I want is a mapping between the Mac and the company name that's all in one line, then that's a fairly simple regular expression. It's simple. Well, the bad part about regular expressions is it's harder to read than to write. So it's, ha it's really hard to read. But to write, it's very easy. It's simply a hexadecimal, two, then a, a dash, and so on. That's the three hexadecimals. Then it is basically this fixed anchor hex that is in each line. And then this one is just one or more white spaces. And then the vendor with anything that follows. So this would pass the entire line. But uh, it is doing something when I am. OK, maybe it's. Yeah. Uh, so when I run this very really carefully, let's do it this way. OK, I can see that. Uh, 
Well, that's obviously not true. <laughs> a lot more than 54 in there. Uh, let's just move on. Because the thing that I really wanted to show you is, if you parse a file like that, you can, of course, create a lookup table. I don't know if any one of you have done that before. When you take group object uh, with these two parameters, then you get back a hash table where you can ask uh, the property that you mentioned here for the value. So this would basically give me a lookup table where I can say lookup table dot and then the vendor ID and get back the vendor. But for large data sets, this takes quite some time. So the last puzzle piece that I wanted to give you is a commandlet that's been in PowerShell, I think, since version 1, that many people don't have on their radar, but is very, very useful, and that's this one, select string. Select string is extremely fast and can, can be a great solution for... You can't see it in the back. Oh, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll scale it. I hope that the display sticks with me. Let me just do it like this. <coughs> do it like this. <coughs> So basically what I have here is I have a vendor ad, uh, ID. I have my vendor list, which is quite large. I use select string. And as a pattern, I'm simply using that. It's a simple pattern. It's not a regular expression in this case. I'm not using it as a regular expression. And then the fun thing about it is this does not only give me the line that has the pattern, but it also has a context. And I'm using context 05, which means I want zero lines above the matching line but five lines after the matching line, which happens to be the address of my vendor. So that is a great way, a very simple way, to get a specific vendor out of it. Because what I now do is create my hash table, add the vendor information. This is, again, <coughs> a little bit text splitting, where I say the vendor is the last word after the last space, and, um, and the uh, information that I got from the context. Here's the context. The context is the post context, the five lines after the line that I wanted. So if I run this with my fantasy MAC address ID thing, what I get back is this. It, this was made by Intel, and that's where they, where they live, or where the card lives. I don't know. It's the information that was associated with that vendor. So again, this is lots of uh, little scripts that, of course, uh, serve as inspiration. Uh, you'll get them all, so you can take them and play with them. It's not. I'm, I don't expect anyone to really digest any of these samples in a minute, but I just wanted to give you a broad overview from the practical approach, what you can do. And I see this turns red, so I have to come to an end. And I am at an end, I think. Let's see. Okay. <coughs> I think that I can sp yeah, skip the rest. So um, we have um, done a little journey. We started with parsers that you created from scratch using split and regex, then use the existing PowerShell parsers, especially import CSV and convert from uh, convert to C from CSV. And finally, look, took a look at the uh, new experience-based parsing in PowerShell 5. So that's it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Hmm? Oh. Okay. Uh, by the way,